Hi, I'm Ty with Total Finishing Solutions. Today we're going to show you the startup of a new door painting line for one of our customers. What we've provided is the fast rack equipment style manual push door racks. These racks allow you to put a bracket on the top and bottom of the door. Using the lock scribble mechanism, you can rotate the door in any direction. Now spin this and lock it in position at any angle that you want for, for painting or curing. Once you've got a door, dry it and attach the storage rack onto the same part that you use for painting. The handle has a double bar system that allows you to stick it in that slot and it ensures that it's stored at a vertical position. The racks have two locked wheels and two rotating wheels so you can drive the parts around your shop and in and out of ovens and spray for screens. So our customer is using a water-based two-component pulling system from Sherwin-Williams. This is the clear component that they're top shooting the doors with. They use a single component BP Siding Plus for a base coat for all of your different colors. The operation of the system, you come in on like a Monday morning, you're going to turn the main air on. This is the Wagner Twin Control, 2840 pumps. We have one for A, one for flush one for catalyst. This is a simple on-off to the pump. This is an air-driven turbine that powers the, the brain of the two component system, so the only connection to this is air. When I turn the air on, it spins the turbine, provides a low voltage 12 volt signal, and this powers up. In the operation mode, the painter only has the ability at this point to do three functions, spray, stop, or flush. So we've got all of the uh, pumps labeled as to what the settings should be. You always want the catalyst to be approximately 10% higher pressure than the base, so that when we have an injection of catalyst, it can go you know, through the uh, base component and out to spray. So to start the system, you simply press spray, You'll see it's blinking green. I'm gonna now go pull the trigger until this becomes solid green and this will actually count down how many cc's we've programmed for the uh, amount of fluid that's in the hose. Come on into the paper. I keep the air cap and tip in a little can of the flushing solvent. In this case, that is three parts water to one part fuel cell salt. Okay, the tip.
back out to the control unit. You see we now have a solid green light, meaning that we've uh, loaded it with material. Okay, and it's toggling through some displays. So 12.0 to 1 is our mix ratio. We have 229 minutes of our hot lifetime remaining. That's going to count down if I don't pull the trigger in advanced material. Okay. Before I get ready to spray, I need to now turn on my atomizing air. the tails in the spray pattern I simply go over add atomizing air until the tails have disappeared I'll clearly see they're gone that was about 12 pounds of fluid pressure with this particular coating so I can now go and start painting doors End of the day, to flush the system, hit stop. It's now telling me how many minutes of hot life I have remaining before I would be forced to flush. I hit flush, take my tip and cap back off. I do need to turn my atomizer here up. I just hold the trigger until it stops. It's got a preset amount of material that we programmed. Watch it. Once I see that I have really good clean solvent, I can put the tip and cap back on and flush some through that so that I can clear the tip. And then again, just pull the trigger until it counts down and it stops. In this instance, we programmed it to flush about a liter. So I'm still pulling the trigger, but it stopped. We come back out to the controller. You'll see it's back in the standby mode. No green light, so it's just sitting here idle. It knows it's been flushed. I would then just turn off the system at the end of the day. See it power down. I got my gun and hose. And again, I would put my air cap and tip in a little container soak overnight so that nothing can get hardened there. All right, this is a uh, hermetically sealed tank with a desiccant dryer because the catalyst is moisture sensitive. So we're trying to prevent any humidity that's in the air from getting in and contaminating the catalyst. So this is a desiccant dryer, oil filled on the bottom so the air comes in, passes through the oil which of course separates the water goes through a desiccant dryer and air gets back into the system here. We're simply gravity feeding out of the tank and into the catalyst pump. There's an indication of color. If these desiccant beads turn green, it's time to replace this filter. There's a fluid filter. It's the same filter that's in the gun, at the GM4700. Here for the catalyst and here for the A component. I have a uh, downstream fluid pressure regulator after the material is mixed. This controls my fluid pressure from up or down if I want more or less material. We've got a label at 400 PSI. This is a gear driven agitator. You want to start this up. Let that stir pretty much all day long. I had it off in this video, 
so that it wouldn't be so noisy and you could hear me talk. Okay, next, after they paint the doors, are our portable prime heat infrared Halcon ovens. So this is just a simple on-off switch. Our ovens have up to five programs that you can preset to toggle through a program. You just touch that touch screen, select which program you want. In this instance, we've got program one. If I want to change anything on a program, I just touch it, hit save, and now I've saved that parameter. The steps of our curing, for, for instance on program one, which is for our VP siding base coat, is one minute of air only. Then we'll do a minute and a half with what we call a flash, which is some heat and air. So it's on for five seconds and off for 10 in the flash mode. And then we're gonna go to a full medium wave, set at 125 degrees for a minute and a half. Then we're gonna go to short wave for four minutes, set at 160. When you put the door in, hit laser, and you can see there's a a laser beam. We wanna make sure that's actually pointed at the surface of the door we're drying, because that actually reads the part and this oven will react to the actual program part temperature and it will always be within two degrees plus or minus of our set point. So we'll go ahead and load a door now. If you want to look through there, you can see we've got our crosshatch on the door. Go inside and see. Okay, so as long as we know we're reading the, the door, I can hit start on the touch screen or the start button and does the same thing. So here to do the air. You see it's counting down and it's now just gonna run our curing program. What's nice is these doors are able to be fully cured in a, about a seven and a half minute uh, cycle. As soon as those doors have cooled back down to 90 degrees, they're able to put these in packaging and ship them right out or install glass or whatever the next process in their facility is. So we're, we're literally taking this process down to, they're doing a base coat and a clear coat for 14 minutes plus spray time. It's pretty impressive. of static pressure differential. So wherever you've started at with new filters, at 0.5, and that's your change point for the filter change out. 